Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Thursday, November 15th. Typically, I like to record these weekly updates on Friday afternoons, close to the when the market's closing, but today uh, I wanted to do it on Thursday for a couple reasons. One, I'll still be trading and sending alerts tomorrow. However, I won't be have a chance to record it tomorrow. So I wanted to do it today. And then secondly, in light of the crazy moves we've seen in oil and nat gas, I thought it would be better to get some additional thoughts and information out to you all uh, today, sooner rather than later. So let's uh, let's jump into the alerts that we had this week and just know that uh, you know tomorrow there, there may be another couple alerts on Friday that won't be included in this update. But we will we'll get we'll get those uh, in next week's update just to make sure you kind of get my thoughts on everything uh, on the new new trades. So first of all, let's just let's go to the platform and take a look at Nat Gas. Okay, so Nat Gas had just an extraordinary move, crazy move. Uh, this is the largest on Wednesday yesterday. This was the largest one day move in Nat Gas in the last fourteen years. Uh, and it's at, and and that gas is at its highest point that we've seen in the last nine years. So, you know that with the, whatever it was, the weather reports, the supply and demand of nat gas, and everything else involved, and just the you know perception from the overall traders, we had this big spike up. Now on Wednesday, with that big move up, you know n no one really knows exactly what caused it. However, you know a lot of times what happens in situations like this when you get some huge massive moves. In, in a symbol, and then now you got a lot of people who were short nat gas having to cover, which propels it even higher, and that creates this what we call capitulation. Now, you know, I got a lot of emails from members who, were, you know, A, had, you know, suffered big, you know, losses in their account at this point. And they were, you know, talking, asking about, you know, should we, should we hedge this? Should we go long? You know, I think this thing's going higher. And, and you've, you've got to, when, when big moves like this happen, you've got to really take a step back and, and, and stay mechanical and stay with the program, even though your positions are, are showing a loss. And, and the reason I say that is, and maybe this is just from seeing this happen over and over, you know, a lot of different times in my life, in my trading career, or maybe it's just the contrarian in me, either way, you know, yesterday when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, if I didn't have a position on right now, what what would I what would I do other than you know put selling premium? What would I what would I look at this chart and think? And my thoughts are is there's no way in hell that I would that I would want to be long uh, yesterday after after the move already happened, right? And so if anything, I'd I'd want to be short. And and anytime you have a huge extended move like that. It feels like, oh my gosh, could this thing just get out of control and go forever? The reality is nothing goes in one direction forever. And, and we're seeing that today. I mean, it's, it's down 17%. You know, it's down more today than it, was, than it was up yesterday. And, you know, it's not that this thing couldn't have continued higher. It's not that it couldn't turn around and continue higher still. But you've, you've got to kind of take a step back when something like this happens and make sure that you are just are staying mechanical. You know, I talk about staying mechanical with our adjustments and our roles all the time. And it's and when a big move like this happens, sometimes I get a lot of questions from members. What are we going to do? What should we do here? And my answer is always, you've got to stay mechanical. And and before being in the trade, obviously the other thing that you need to do that I harp on all the time is making sure that you stay small. Now, keep in mind, you know, especially with nat gas and, and oil and any you know, options on futures related trade, you know, these are much bigger contracts than your, than your equity trade. So when you're trading on stocks or ETFs, you know, those are much smaller size, a lot less leverage than what you get on these options on futures, which can be a good thing if you're staying small, but can be a bad thing if you're too large relative to your account size. And so... The, the one, the other thing I want to make sure that you all understand is, you know, I'm trading this with real money, right? This is, this is real money in this account. So we are aligned exactly with you, our members. 
okay? If we are feeling pain on a position, if you're feeling pain on a position, we're feeling that pain as well, okay? So, you know, unlike, and I talk about, if you've been a member for any time at all, you, you've you heard me talk over and over about the financial industry and financial advisors and how there's huge conflicts of interest because, you know, advisors are making money off of fees regardless of the performance of your account. Well, that's not the case with us, okay? We, if, if we're making money, if, if you're making money, that means we're making money. If we're losing money, that means, you know, we're both losing money. So I want you to, understand that, that we, we feel this just as much as you do. And no, and no matter how big our account is or, or how many times we've seen this, it's still, you know, moves like this are still painful. And, you know, with the alerts portfolio, we had, you know, obviously one set of strangles with one contract and another set of strangles with con, uh, with one contract. So a total of two contracts. Uh, but, e- but even, even with just that small position, you can see on a huge move like this, how quickly that can that can accumulate, and so think about this in in my other larger account. I have several contracts on here, so it is it's been a move that's been you know very extreme for for not only the, the uh, alerts portfolio but for my other account as well, and and so just keep that in mind that this is this is real money that we're trading with too. So I want you to understand that. Our goal is specifically in line with you all's goal, and that goal is to make money and, and do it as consistently as possible. Now, having said that, the only way to defend against huge moves like this when you're selling when you're selling premium like we do is to keep your position size small. And if your if your account is too small to accommodate the the risk involved with a trade like this, then you the, then you really should not be trading it in that account. And overall, the majority of the feedback that I've gotten from members through this through this move is that most people, yeah, boy, it was painful because they're they're seeing some huge moves outside their expected range, and and you know showing losses in their account. But the majority of people are doing it right and have have traded small enough so that they're not getting wiped out or anything like that. Now I have had a couple of people you know, who were trading in this type of position in an account that's too small and, and they are feeling, you know, more extreme pain. And, and so it just, I just want to reiterate the way to initially defend a move like this is at order entry and keeping your position size small. The other way is obviously you can define your risk. So if you are in a smaller account and you want to have that exposure in something like oil or nat gas, instead of doing a, a strangle with uncovered options, you can also do defined risk with an iron condor. And so I, I hope everyone is, is learning from this situation. This is when you really become a better trader is when you go through situations like this. Now, I know for some of you, it, it might not feel like a good lesson and no one ever likes to lose money. I do not like to lose money. No one is more competitive in the markets as far as wanting to be as consistent and profitable as possible than I am. But things like this happen and you have to be able to, you have to be able to work through it and, and especially learn from it. And if you're trading too large, you never get that chance to learn from it because, you know, you may have to close out of the position when you didn't want to, or you may have to uh, close out of other positions and, and, you know, these different things that come along with, you know, based on your, your specific account size. So I, I say all that just to, just to A, kind of help you through the process of thinking through it like we do, and B, you know, helping you become a better trader because hopefully by now you know that this stuff works. I mean, we were, you know, up nearly 40% for the year, year to date, uh, you know, our account uh, a couple of weeks ago, peaked it up about uh, up to about ninety six thousand. Now we're down to about eighty four thousand. Is our is our account size now? So that's a huge that's a huge loss from our peak profit to where we are now, um, and it's painful. I mean, nobody nobody likes to see that kind of thing. And and you know, with that kind of a volatility in your P and L, you know, that's almost too large. Um, even, even for the account size that we're trading, I mean, we don't, we don't like to see that type of volatility in our P and L, but we do know that things like this do happen. And we've seen this movie before we've been through things like this. And, and again, just to reiterate, not to beat a dead horse, but you've got to stay mechanical and, and, and work through this. 
And, you know, just like I said, you know, yesterday, this was a huge move up. Now we're seeing it completely reverse to the downside today. And so let's let's just jump in here and take a look at at where we're at now. So here is so we've got two different pieces on here. This is our one. What's in? It's a, a basically a barely inverted strangle. Now we've got the 4.05 put and the four call, so almost a straddle. Uh, but you can see price is right here. And, and now here's the other thing to look at: is we're still getting over 100 about 109 dollars of theta currently today at this point where price is trading, and you can see. Uh, minus six, so we've still got over six thousand dollars that we can make up. You know, if, if price is going to stay in a, in a fairly steady range, we have over six thousand dollars that we can make up in theta over the next 40 41 days. Okay, now again, we're going to roll this when we get to 21 days to expiration, but just think about the, all that all that theta that still has to come out of these options between now and expiration. Okay, that's a lot. So we have a you know in a very short period of time. We have the potential to make a lot of this back, you know, if price does calm down. And and a lot of times after a big move, that's what happens. And that's why rolling up your puts or rolling down your calls works and then rolling out to the next expiration works is because even if you do have a huge move that moves out of your range, a lot of times after that, price will settle down and allow that theta to decay and, and bounce around in a little range, allowing you to get back to profitability. Now, it's going to take several cycles, and I say this over and over, anytime you have a big move that that busts out of your range, you just need to consider that you're going to be in that trade longer than initially anticipated. Okay, so we are going to end up rolling this into, from we're in January now, we're going to end up rolling it out into February. Once we get to down to that, around that 21 days to expiration, we're going to stay mechanical and continue to do that. And by doing that, we're going to collect an additional credit, and then we're going to uh, continue to manage it as needed in that next cycle and then potentially roll it out to the next cycle again. So that that's that piece there. And then this one here, we are already inverted. So we're at the 4.1 put. Our puts are higher than our calls, which are at 3.1. So you can see here, uh, here's where price is trading right now. And you can see we still have, you know, we have $7,000 worth of theta to potentially recoup just in this cycle between now and expiration. Again, same thing. As we get close to that 21 days to expiration, we're going to be rolling out to February, but we've got a lot of theta that we could potentially make up uh, to get back some of those some of those current losses. So keep that in mind. Um, if you guys have any other questions on that gas, feel free to email me, but um, you know, that that we're going to stay mechanical and we're going to continue to 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 work the process just like we always do. And you know, if price turns around and rips higher again, we're gonna we're gonna continue to roll those puts up, collect that additional credit, roll out to the next expiration cycle. Nothing goes in one direction forever. And like I said, we've we've seen this kind of move before. But what you can't do is a trade too large and b freak out in certain situations uh, so that you you know you you book those losses and and it just kind of shatters your confidence, shatters your your trading, and and kind of shatters everything. So. I really hope that's helpful in kind of working through that process. Uh, let's let's also go to oil. So oil, uh, big move in the opposite direction. Um, and you know this is this is the other thing too is typically you don't see you know this type of move. I mean natural gas and and oil they are both energies, right? So there is that that relationship. But from a from a movement standpoint. They're not, they're not very correlated. They don't typically move together in one direction or in the opposite direction. In this case, you know, oil's just been on this slide to the downside and then had that big move on Tuesday to the to the downside to extend that. Uh, but you know, the fact that we got hit with the massive move in nat gas and a massive move in oil kind of back to back, kind of double whammied from a from a standpoint of huge moves outside of our range, both in very large symbols. Uh, like I said, options on futures being much larger than your than your equities. So you know we had this huge kind of record record down day with you know twelve red bars in a row. Now the last couple of days we've we've bounced up a little bit, but if we take a look at our our trades on the analyze tab, you can see that price is about right here, and so we're we're inverted on this piece of our trade, meaning our puts are higher than our calls. 
if we if we take a look uh, at our calls, you know, obviously we've still got a lot of of potential profit in those, so we're not needing to make another adjustment on in here yet. But very similar to Nat Gas, once we get down to that 21 days to expiration, we'll look to roll this out to February. Now in oil, uh, January only has 29 days left, so we've got uh, you know once once we get down to about 21 days, so about eight days from now. We're going to look to roll that out to February. Now we've got this other piece, which is another uh, short strangle that we added that we haven't even had to adjust yet. Even after that major move, price is still well within the range. Uh, you, you know, we're not even to our short strike yet. And if we do get to our short strike, we're going to stay mechanical and we're going to roll those calls down. And then the same thing with this piece. This is also in January. So when we get down to 21 days to expiration, we're going to roll this out to February. And again, we're just gonna we're gonna end up being in this trade for several cycles while we roll and manage and adjust the trade. Okay, so that's that's where we're at in oil. Now let's go over. Let's let's start from the top and go uh, from the from the first of this week and go over the different trade alerts and uh, and kind of put those all together as well. Uh, on Monday, starting with Monday on forge slash ZB, which is bonds, we had a short strangle on in bonds. We booked almost 40% of max profit in just a couple weeks. And so we're, we're completely out of bonds. We don't have any bonds, notes, or TLT. If we take a look at the chart of TLT to get an idea of the applied volatility, we're at 68 on the IV percentile. So if that stays high, we will potentially look to add in something on those uh, on one of those positions, either ZN or ZB or TLT. And so we can look for that here in the next uh, few days. And then next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we rolled down our long put vertical in Apple. Apple made a move down in price. We were at over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. So we're continuing to to keep this position on, extend duration, to keep that short delta in our overall portfolio. And so let's take a look at Apple. It's moved down even more since we did this roll in our favor. So, you know, now we've got some profit on this piece. Uh, we're in December, which has still 36 days to expiration. You know, if this moves much lower here, when we get to about 50% of max profit again, if that happens, then we'll look to potentially roll this out to January or depending on how much time we have left, we may just roll the strikes closer again. So that is Apple. Apple, which seem, seemingly went up forever, uh, is now starting to roll over and we're finally getting, uh, getting back to, uh, almost back to profits in Apple if we can keep this going for another, for another cycle or two. Next trade was in oil. So we already, we already went over oil, but just, just to kind of reiterate what we did here is with the price moving down, we rolled down our calls. We rolled down our untested side and, and we rolled down from the 67 strike to the 61. We keep our tested side, the same strike. We don't, we don't move that. And we'll just, and we're just continuing to wait for some, uh, you know, additional theta decay and some time to pass. And once we get down to that 21 days to expiration, we'll roll that out to the next one. Next trade was the Nat Gas roll. So on uh, on Wednesday, we did two Nat Gas rolls and we simply were rolling up our puts. So we had two different pieces on there. We had two different put sides. So in this first one, we just rolled up our puts. And, and when we do that, when we roll up the untested side, we're always doing that to around the 30 delta. And so that's exactly what we did here. You know, that put had very little value left in it. So we bought it back, we closed it out, and we resold out uh, same cycle in January because there's plenty of time. We just rolled up, uh, rolled up our puts from 3.3 up to 4.05 and, and, and collected a credit in doing so. So, and then I mentioned we were still holding our other short strangle, which a couple alerts later, we did the exact same thing. We rolled up the puts on our other set of short strangles and uh, rolled this one up from 2.9 to 4.1. So these are these are really close, right? 4.05 and 4.1, and those are both right around that 30 delta mark, and so I just wanted to keep them separate, so we just did slightly different strikes there. Um, and so same thing, we're just gonna wait and uh, collect some more theta. Hopefully price settles down, and then we can roll that out to the next expiration cycle and continue to manage that as needed. 
Next trade was a closing trade in Netflix. So we uh, we, were, we had a short call vertical on here that we put on in Netflix to add some short delta into our overall portfolio. Netflix made a nice move down, booked over 50% of max profit on that trade. So we are completely out of Netflix. If we take a look at the chart here, you can see we, we put this on about right here, took a little bit of heat on the trade, but then it rolled over and we got out for a nice profit on that one. Next trade, I already went over the net gas one. Next trade was a closing trade in SPY. So we had a short strangle on in SPY, booked over 35% of max profit on that one. Uh, the, the move down in price yesterday gave us a chance to bring price back into close to being centered in our short strangle and you know had over 35% of profit. So we went ahead and booked that one. And so if we take a look at SPY, let's just take a look at the chart here. You can see it's, it's bouncing up higher today, but nice sell-off yesterday got us back into a range where we we're in a nice profit position. So completely out. IV percentile still continues to stay high. So as we, as we look to add positions, we'll definitely look back to SPY potentially. And then uh, closing trade. So I wanted to address a couple of things in this one. I got several emails from, uh, or a couple emails from a couple different members who actually got assigned uh, VXX stock on this one. We did not get assigned, but this morning we went ahead and closed that out. <coughs> Excuse me. So we sent that, we sent out this alert to close our short call vertical, took a loss on this one. I mean, we, this was really frustrating and I hate to, uh, I hate to play the hindsight game here, but just to give you an idea of what we were looking at on VXX, we, uh, so we had this on and then so we put this on obviously after implied volatility and the price spiked up and then it went way against us, came all the way back and we, and we, we actually had an order in to scratch this trade, to scratch it for a, as a break even, never got filled. And then unfortunately with the market going back down, it uh, price ran away from us. So we ended up having to close this one for a loss and we sent that out alert out today. Now, uh, what I just mentioned before in regards to assignment, remember, we have an options assignment mini course here. So if you ever have questions, this is all addressed in your, in your option assignment mini course. But I did get a couple emails. A couple members did get assigned because they we had in the money uh, options on VXX and we're you know, only two days away from expiration. The options expire tomorrow. So uh, a couple members did get assigned the actual stock and they were wondering what to do. And we had already sent out the alert uh, but, uh, and, and obviously we closed the position. So the answer to that, you know, I got assigned stock. What do I do? Well, you close out the position and, and that's, you know, unless you wanted to keep that, that, uh, stock in your portfolio and, and sell options against it, you can do that. But what we would do is we would close it out. We closed out this position. If we had been assigned, we would close out that position as well. So that's the answer to that. Unfortunately, took a loss on that one. And, uh, if, you know, if implied volatility spikes again, and this kind of pops back up, uh, I looked at potentially, you know, selling another one today, uh, when the market was down early this morning, but we didn't want any additional long Delta in our portfolio. We've got just a little bit of short Delta, not even quite one-to-one -one on our ratio. So we've got about 400 of, uh, theta and we've got about minus 100 of short Delta. So I didn't want to enter that and create some more long delta in our portfolio. So we are just out of VXX at this point, uh, but we will look to potentially re-enter if uh, implied volatility stays high and if price kind of pops its head back up, try to recoup some of that loss that we just had on that one. So those are all the alerts for the week so far. And then let's take a look at some of our other positions. We've got a position on in the Euro, which is still very centered. No profit, no loss here yet, really. And so we're just kind of playing the waiting game in forward slash 6E. In ES, we've still got this long put vertical that we have on for short delta exposure. And you can see, let me just widen this out here so you can actually see the numbers. You can see price is pretty close to our break even here. Just need a little bit of down move to, to benefit that piece. And then gold, we've got a, an adjusted short strangle in gold where you can see it's still pretty centered and we're just looking for some more theta to decay, some more time to pass 
in gold. We're in the January options, which have 41 days, so still got a lot of time before we do anything in forward slash GC. In wheat, still have this iron condor, which you can see we got a little bit of profit on, but just waiting for some more time to pass. If we get a little bit of an up move in wheat, that'll benefit us there as well. Uh, I already mentioned Apple. We've got that piece that we rolled down, and we're just waiting for a little bit more downside potentially to benefit that. DIA, we've got two sets of short call verticals in DIA, which you can see I've got both checked here, so they're, they're pretty close in strikes. These were originally part of Iron Condors, and we've just continued to roll a couple cycles, several cycles for that uh, short delta exposure, so just looking for some downside to benefit that trade. EEM, we've got a short strangle on here in EEM. You can see we got a little bit of profit here, not enough to take off yet. So just waiting in EEM at this point. EFA, we sold a short call vertical to add some short delta exposure in our portfolio. You can see we've got a tiny bit of profit right here, but just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. EWW, we've got two different short strangles on here. One is this uh, adjusted short strangle. So we've got the 44 call and the 42 puts. And you can see prices is, is right here. If we look at just the call side, you know, we still got plenty of premium in there. So no other adjustments needed at this point. Uh, so we're just holding, holding on to this. Um, we had originally adjusted it because price came down, breached our short strike, came down to our basically our break even. So we rolled down our calls. Now we're just waiting for some more time to pass there. And then we've got this other piece of the trade, which is a full unadjusted strangle. Uh, you can see implied volatility has gone up since we put this on, so we are down slightly on the trade, but price is still well within our range, so just waiting for some time to pass here. Still in December, so 36 days to expiration, so nothing to do at this point. If we take a look at a chart of EWW, you can see implied volatility is still extremely high, so definitely a, a symbol we want to be in at this point. And then EWZ making a big move up today. And so if we take a look here, we, we're pretty centered here, got some profit, not quite enough to take off yet. We want to get at least 30% of max profit on these uh, short strangles. So just holding on to EWZ for now. In Facebook, we sold some premium in there. We've got a short strangle on in Facebook and still, still pretty centered within our range. So just waiting for some theta to decay, maybe some contraction in implied volatility to benefit that trade. You can see it, uh, we put it on, implied volatility popped up a little bit since then. Now it's just kind of leveling off. So looking for some contraction in implied volatility to benefit that piece. In FXI, so we've got two pieces to this trade on. We've got two different butterflies. This is our put butterfly. And so you can see price has moved a little bit outside of our range here. So we're just holding to see if it we get a little bit of bounce back, uh, back into range. And then we also have our call butterfly. And you can see this one's very centered. So just waiting for some theta to decay on that one. If we put these both together, it basically looks like an iron condor and still well within our range here. So nothing to do except for wait on FXI. IWM, we've still got an iron condor on here in IWM. And you can see we've, we've got some profit here, but just waiting for some more before we take that off. IYR, we've got an iron condor on here. We're in a pretty good profit position overall on this trade, uh, but we're just we're waiting for some more profit on this piece of the trade before we take it off potentially. Uh, so just kind of playing the waiting game there. In the queues, very similar to DIA, we've got a couple sets of short call verticals that were originally part of iron condors. We've been rolling these for several cycles just to keep that short delta exposure. You can see we've got this one here, which is three strikes wide, the 173, 176 calls. And you can see we've got some profit in there, but just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. And then we've got this other one, which is five strikes wide. And you can see we've got a little bit of profit there as well, but just holding that for some more profit and the short delta exposure it gives our portfolio. SMH, this one is come back, nice move up today, almost 3% higher in price. And this one is pretty pretty well centered. Uh, we're almost about at break even on the trade overall after the rolls and, and adjustments. 
And so we'll probably either, we'll either take this one off or break even uh, once we get to that point, or we may, you know, try to squeak out a little bit of a profit. But um, of course, if, if price kind of makes a big move, we may look to add on to this and add another piece to, to get some more profits, but we'll uh, get some more credits and then additional and uh, effectively uh, book, book some more profits, assuming price stays in our range. So just holding SMH for now. XLK, we have this long put vertical on for that short delta exposure. And just, so just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. And lastly, XRT. So prices moved down a little bit today, almost 1%. So you can see we've got some profit there, but not quite enough to take off. So just continuing to manage that one as necessary. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the trade, the positions through Thursday, November 15th. And we will pick up on reviewing uh, Friday's trades in next week's video update. Everybody have a great final uh, weekend before Thanksgiving. Uh, next week is Thanksgiving on Thursday. We'll, we will be trading uh, before that, at least on Monday and Tuesday for sure. Actually, I haven't checked to see when the markets are closed. I think the I think they're typically open the morning of Thanksgiving, or I can't I can't remember exactly. So uh, just be sure to check that. We we won't definitely won't be trading on Thanksgiving, uh, but leading up to that, uh, we we will potentially based on opportunities and and necess and uh, needed trade. So everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.